So the null hypothesis when we're conducting a, a inferential test is that rho equals zero. This here is the Greek letter rho, R-H-O, and we're going to use that to denote the population correlation. So the correlation that exists out there in the population data. So the null hypothesis is that in the population, the two variables are independent. There's no correlation, no relationship between x and y. We can have a non-directional alternative hypothesis, just rho doesn't equal zero, which is indicating that there is some kind of correlation between x and y. Or we can have two uh, one-sided alternatives, either that there's positive correlation or a test for negative correlation. This by far is the most commonly applied test for correlation that we see uh, in, in practice. So we're, always, we're almost always going to be conducting this two-tailed test. Here's an example of a Pearson's R calculated for uh, between two variables. On the x dimension, we have the square feet of houses. And on the y dimension, we have the price of the house. So the first thing that we need to do is create a scatter plot and determine whether or not this looks like a linear relationship. Well, according to this, it seems to me like there is this uh, linear trend through the data points. So that tells us that we can use Pearson's R correlation and use it inferentially. The computer outputs the value of the Pearson's correlation statistic at 8 point, uh, sorry, at 0 0.841. So R equals this, the sample correlation, the correlation here equals 0.841. This tells us that there's positive correlation. You know, this relationship is positive and therefore R is positive. It also tells us, there's, tells us that there's quite a strong relationship here between these two variables. Okay, the dispersion of these points away from this trend line is relatively small. That's because R is close to 1. Now let's conduct a hypothesis test. You can have a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that rho equals 0. And we'll do a two-tailed alternative hypothesis that rho doesn't equal 0. That's step one. Step two, that is, we're going to use a t-test with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Here, n is 49, so we're going to have 47 degrees of freedom. Of course, a t with 47 degrees of freedom is essentially the same thing as using a standard normal test, a z-test. So three, I haven't specified the uh, the level of, of significance, but you know, let's just say 5% for now. Step four would be to actually calculate this R. The computer is doing it for us in this case at 0 0.841, but we could have calculated the covariance and each of the standard deviations and computed the R by hand. Uh, that's actually step five, all of those computing computations. Step four is to define the zone of rejection. So remember, we are essentially using a normal test, and we said that we're going to have 5% significance, so we want the critical values such that we've got 2.5% in each tail. Step uh, five is then to compute this, the correlation statistic, and then from that, compute the t-statistic. So remember that t equals, and I have it on the previous slide, r times the square root of n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared. So t equals r times square root of n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared, which equals 0 0.841 times square root n minus 2 is 47 over 1 minus 
0 0.841 squared. That equals 0 0.841 times the square root of 160.6, which equals 10.65. So our t's our t statistic is 10.65. And remember, we can essentially use a z-score because we have 47 degrees of freedom. So our t is going to be way out in our right-hand side of, of the distribution. And then in step 6, we are going to reject the null hypothesis that these two variables are independent. There's far more evidence to suggest that rho doesn't equal 0, that in the population, there is some sort of positive correlation between these two variables.